uh, right. motion motion to approve the minutes from last week. Second. Second. <laughs> all right, they're approved, right? Oh, you don't have to say. You have to say all in favor, Julie. All in. I was waiting for you. You said the motion, so I was waiting for you. Oh, to I, I didn't know the person who said the motion does the voting. All right, all in favor. Right. So the motions are approved by unanimous consent. <laughs> <laughs> Faith, did you make it on? Yeah, I did. I, it just didn't come in properly for a second. I'm not sure why. Okay, that's okay. So we just approved the minutes. Um, David voted, and Joshua and Susan kind of seconded it at the same. Joshua, time. you can have it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> who did the first, and who did the second? David did the first, and Joshua and did, Josh the did the second. Okay. Thanks. Sure. I just got off Teams, so I think Zoom wasn't happy. Oh, right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Makes sense. All right. Well, Happy New Year, everyone. Happy Welcome New back. Year. Welcome to 2021. Interesting, uh, interesting times. Um, how are people doing with the political climate? I, don't, I mean, this specifically isn't our, on our agenda because our agenda was created, I think, before everything occurred at the Capitol, but how how are people managing the violence that's happening? I'm curious, you know, what everyone's hearing at the high school too in ways that we can be helpful and supportive around all of this. I've already been in a couple of meetings with high school and trying to support people that are like anxious already. And I think this is creating increased anxiety, um, but I wasn't sure if any other people were hearing other things or experiencing other things. And just checking in with everyone too to make sure you're all okay. I know just like speaking for myself, I know I definitely have some level of just worry about what's going to happen next week, yeah. given last week's events. Yeah. And, Agreed. you know, yeah. but I think the I think school, from what I've heard, my kids, I know all talked about last week's events in their classes and it sounds like it's been handled it's being handled like pretty well from what i've heard based on their feedback good um, yeah i had i had some discussions in um in a couple of my classes very open kind of like up to interpretation not kind of pre-denomination like you can make your own decision about it like what you should view it as which was good very very just an open discussion and how we can how we see it Good. Good. A small sample size, but from the other teachers that I heard from, and myself included, I would say there was some sense of relief here because in the past there was always sort of like the danger of like saying something political, which we need to steer away from and being really careful. Um, yeah. And in this case, um, the teachers were told, you can talk about this as um wrong and what mm -hmm. happened and um i think some teachers that had been anxious before even though that they felt like that's connected to their curriculum and it um was important in terms of talking to students about didn't and now sort of felt a sense of relief of being able to have a discussion in class that's great that's great yeah we're, we're having similar conversations where it's interesting times that you know, as a mental health professional, you could be sitting across from somebody who has very different beliefs than you do, and it's not your job to, I mean, mm -hmm. to, to talk about your own beliefs, but help, you know, that person with whatever they're struggling with, regardless of beliefs and staying impartial. And these times, you know, we've been talking a lot about how to do that when you might feel so strongly and really making sure that you're talking about the violence and not, you know, not necessarily getting into the politics behind it too much. Um, if the client wants to go there, then, you know, engaging in that conversation with them. But it is interesting as, you know, we're all human too, and we all do have beliefs. And this is sometimes making those beliefs stronger. So just the difficulties in doing that sometimes can be, be a real, a real struggle. But I think the staff are doing really well with it. And it's also interesting, you know, sitting in meetings where in a meeting, you, there might be a coworker that has very different opinions too. And you might have a group of people kind of talking about their beliefs and then be, you know, making sure that you're being politically correct about it to not offend anyone. It's, it's just interesting giving everything that's happened um, 
I mean, the good thing is every everybody that we've talked to, we interact with, it, you know, the violence is not okay and no one is in agreement with how that's happened. So I think that that's, that's at least a consistent message. Um, but I'm glad they're talking about it at the school. I think, you know, the people need a, a place to talk about it. Right, it always felt so different to me that students are probably getting bombarded with stories on social media um, and all the information outside school. And then they come into school and we're quiet about it. And that's really how I framed it in my classes. I started by asking how many of you have a close friend or family member or somebody that's important in your life that feels very different than you politically. Mm -hmm. And most students sort of raise their hand. I said, so I think it's still important to have discussions and then mm -hmm. recognize like, how you can be passionate about what you believe in mm -hmm. without saying something that can be hurtful of somebody else or how, like, if you're passionate, you might want to convince somebody else to feel similar to you. And how do you convince somebody? You don't just say I'm right and you're wrong and get really into yours. You, you try to understand where they're coming from mm -hmm. to sort of find where you can meet them to, Mm -hmm. Try to convince them of something that you might believe in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's such a good message. And it's such a good conversation to, uh, to have because I think on social media, people do kind of go down this kind of rabbit hole of being able to post whatever they want or however they feel and not taking those other things into consideration because it's kind of safeguarded. So we teach that in our um, social media workshops too about how you know a lot of things that are posted on social media is not something you would say in person and why is that and how can that be interpreted so it's it's interesting the way it's all playing out now at washington certainly isn't being a role model for having different opinions and being respectful <laughs> right. in in how you share them and and that's really getting lost right now so yep. it's a I good agree. conversation Well, thank you. And keep me updated. You know, if you're hearing again, you know, we're trying to support the community in whatever way we can. And, um, you know, hopefully that, you know, things in Massachusetts stay quiet um, and people can be respectful of those various opinions, but we'll see how it all plays out over the next however many days are left. I should have a countdown going seven days. <laughs> and then even after that, what that's going to look like. So. Right. All right. Okay. Um, update on programs, services, and awards. Sure. Um, so take a positive spin. The Ford Award is coming up on the 25th. Um, I've been in touch with Hillary and the people that nominated her. So we're really excited to be able to recognize her. She's lovely. All the winners are really. They're all so thankful and so grateful. And um, But she she's somebody that facilitates giving out awards. So it's just funny that, you know, the tables have turned and now she's getting one and is just so flattered. So um, it's really nice to be able to recognize her. We're going to be sending out those flyers um, on Friday. So for the invite and we'll do it on Zoom and do the best we can. But Denise Carlick is going to be there and the Ford family is really thankful. I got a really nice note from them. So we're excited to be able to continue that award. What time yeah. is it on the 25th? Just so I can put it on my calendar. 5.30. Um, I also know we talked about the Ford Award a little bit last time and, you know, what do we do with the runners up and do we recognize them somehow, but if they win the next year, will that discount them? And I know we kind of talked about it, but didn't come up with any conclusion. I didn't know if anyone had any other thoughts about the runners up that we have, if we should um, post them somehow or send them to the paper so that they're recognized in a way. And I mean, maybe they would still feel good about winning the next year, even if they didn't win this year and people would be able to recognize the work they do. Um, I'm not sure what people's thoughts are on that this week. I like the paper idea. That sounds pretty good. Just, just a little, like if it's like a night, if it's like a little box in the news and you get like the main winner and then just kind of a little honorable mentions with the names. I feel like that'd yep. be nice just to reckon. Like it's, it's nice to recognize people this year. Yep. Okay. Or what about if it like not connected to the ward it, but we passed on the names with sort of the nomination stuff. So they could write little stories about it. Like maybe it was a feature once a month of somebody mm. from Needham that, and then maybe that sort of encouraged them to like get submissions or something. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 
because it could idea. get you know more donations for their for their work yeah yeah yep. sorry i forget if you told us this last time we met but do the other nominees know that they've been nominated um sometimes yes and sometimes no okay i'd say most of the time no because usually when we pick a winner and i tell them they're like i have to explain what the ford award was is <laughs> So they, yeah, they really have no idea. So, um, I mean, maybe some tell them that they're nominated, but I would say the most part, my guess is no. Got it. The idea of uh, having honorable mentions is great, but um, I wonder if they're never the recipient of the actual award and like they receive an honorable mention. I don't know if it would take away from them receiving it the real award at some point I don't know what are you, what are everyone's thoughts on that like it, like if somebody's an honorable mention for multiple years yeah because exactly. yeah, yeah. Yeah. we have had that where someone's been yeah nominated several years in a row and hasn't won and so right uh, I do like the newspaper idea separated you know from the Ford award that it doesn't actually need to have anything to do with it but that these um, people doing this great stuff are just recognized in the community for what they're doing. I think that's a great idea because we we did have over the years there have been some people that have never received it mm -hmm. that were nominated numerous times. Right. So. And we have had years where we've had seven, right? We've had a lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, right, one year we did it, Julie. I can't remember who did it with us, and we had. Seven. Kevin and we had like seven nominations and right. that was really hard. Mm -hmm. So, um, so not everybody would have won the next year or the following year. So exactly. Right. All right. I, I mean, we have a pretty good relationship with the hometown weekly, so I can talk to them about maybe running something that's separate from the Ford award, but we could put a little something together with a nomination form um, just to recognize. We also have a really good relationship with the cable channel. I wonder if they would run, you know, a news story on mm. some of these people and have, you know, because they really are interested in what's happening in Needham and all these stories are from Needham. So we could try something like that. That'd be a great monthly segment, like somebody said, you know, mm -hmm. great yeah. things going on in Needham. Yep. Heroes. Yep. Speaking of that monthly segment, um, what happened to the Ray of Hope Award? Is that still going? How regular is that? Yeah, so we picked it back up last summer. We're trying to do at least a couple a year. Um, we need to promote it again. I haven't gotten any more nominations recently, but I think as soon as we start promoting it, we'll do that, um, or we'll probably get some. So we're gonna do that. We have a, we're working on a winter brochure. So we're gonna put it in the winter brochure and then I'll send it out to all the schools. Um, and hopefully that will get some, um, some nominations in. Okay, I'll work with them on that. I think that's a great solution. I have a question. Is Kevin and Arena the only people missing? Arena's here. She just popped off for a second. Adrian um, was here in the beginning and then had to hop off for her call. And then, yeah, Kevin. Okay, I'm just making sure I have the right list since I missed the two minutes when the Zoom was coming in. Thank you. I won't interrupt okay. again, Sarah, unless- No, that's okay. No worries. Um, our other big focuses, you know, we're still very focused on mental health. You know, again, there's a, a lot of anxiety and depression and uh, we're continuing to increase our clinical services. We're running a bunch of groups right now um, just to try to reach as many people as possible. We were able to post one of our part-time positions. So we're hoping to hire that soon and that'll help us clear the rest of our wait list off to make sure that everyone that is currently looking for services is getting it. Um, you know, in a typical year, we have a bunch of clients that we also see in the schools and we're not doing that this year just because of the difficulties with it. It's not that we're not allowed to actually, um, the school system has said we are able to, but just logistics and borrowing somebody's office and timing and the schedule. So we're doing a lot of Zoom work um, and hopefully we'll be able to go to the schools once the scheduling is a little bit easier. So, but that's allowed us to pick up some additional clients um, just because sometimes, you know, the logistics of that can be difficult. 
we're also working on trying to have a um, webinar training on mental health and how to support youth during this time. Um, we're working with SPAN on a couple, a couple webinars that have to do more about substance use. Our focus with SPAN right now is mostly on marijuana um, because the recent studies have showed that there's been a significant increase in marijuana use and actually a decrease in vaping, um, although vaping marijuana is a kind of in a different category. But so we're trying to tackle some of the increased marijuana use. Um, and so we're actually working with the Natick has a version of SPAN that we're working on and we're going to host two events um, the first event will be in Needham, and there's a pediatrician from UMass who is going to come in and just talk about the dangers of, of marijuana use and how it impacts the brain. And, you know, just kind of a recap. I think a lot of people have heard that, but just kind of a reminder on how it impacts youth development. And then um, there'll be an event in Natick that's going to be a panel discussion with, there's a principal from a recovery high school on the North Shore um, a parent, and she's hoping to get a student to, that will have a panel discussion. Um, and that'll be for Needham and um, Natick to be able to come to that. So we're hoping with all these educational events, we'll also be able to uh, reach out to the larger community um, with the hopes that that will help people with everything that's happening right now. Sarah, is that this, there's a, um, a reality show called 16 and Recovering. Mm -hmm. Is that the school? Uh, mm -hmm. That was very interesting. Yeah. 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 I heard that that show was very well done. I'm actually haven't watched it yet, but yeah. plan on doing so. It's an amazing school because they're instead of when kids, you know, use instead of sending them home or sending them, they're embraced and, yeah. you know, they're working on their issues instead of getting sent away, which, which is what happens right. at regular school. So yeah, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I heard she's an amazing speaker and really, um, knows the work well. So I think, I think that event will be really, really powerful. So those are obviously going to be Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all Zoom events. Okay. Um, and then the other workshop we're working on is, so we've heard from the uh, Pollard and High Rock that there's a lot of youth that are struggling with the amount of technology that's being utilized right now. So we're running workshops for the students and, um, SPAN is working with Beth Israel actually on a workshop for the parents on how to parent in this time when technology is being utilized so much and how to kind of monitor that. And that event is happening in February, early February, I think. But that's going to start to get pushed out. Have any of you seen it? Seen the posting for that at all? I know they just started pushing it out, but just curious if you'd seen it. Not that, that I know of, no. Okay. All right. So yeah, we're going to start pushing that out and sharing that. Um, and the, the hope with that too, is that really pairs nicely with our workshops. So um, we're working with the presenter on helping to promote, you know, so she's going to be working with the parents and then we're going to be working with the, with the students. So hopefully that will um, be really beneficial for the community. The other thing we're starting to think about is uh, Needham Unplugged. So March typically. Um, so we're working on that. Last year when we had Unplugged, you know, it was March is when <laughs> everything fell apart. So we had Unplugged and then we continued a socially distanced activity calendar through all of the summer into the fall. I think we stopped in August. Um, so we're going to pick that back up. We're going to try to make Unplugged a little bit different um, and in really capturing like it, it's hard to be totally unplugged from everything right now because everything is technology, but really emphasizing that there are other things you can do when you can put your phone and computer down. So I think it's a good time to promote it because everyone's using technology so much, but it'll have a little different spin because it is going to be hard to unplug too much during this um, pandemic. Just an idea, like kind of working yep. off what you're talking about. Could it possibly more of like I mean, yes, go for as much unplugged as you can because that's you're trying to get it right from screens, obviously. But kind of more yeah. of an emphasis on like at least familial time or kind of just spend spending time with the people that you can. You know what I mean? Like the really close surroundings. Like I feel like that would be that would be really helpful, especially for mm -hmm. a lot of people who feel in isolated at this time, especially. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to do these calendars too, when you are so limited, like you don't want to encourage ice cream socials with all your friends. <laughs> so it's a kind of a tricky balance that, you know, we're trying to monitor, but yeah. And I, I think the social, social isolation is just, it's so, so difficult. And, you know, I'm hearing that younger, younger students are really struggling with, you know, the, you have to give me space, you have to be six feet apart. And when they're in the, that stage of development where they're supposed to be playing closely with other kids, just how difficult that is for them to internalize. And, you know, kids are coming home and like, give me space, don't get too close and how to understand that and make sense of it, um, I think is really hard, but. Um, okay, any other thoughts about Unplugged? We're gonna be working closely with YMCA and Park and Rec as we usually do. Um, okay, great. The other thing that's happened recently, we ran our first youth mental health first aid class virtually. Um, so all of the trainers had to go through a, a, another training to be able to teach the class. And it's just much different than it was before. I actually think that it's gonna be more successful. So before it was an eight hour class. So a lot, a huge time commitment for people. And I think it was really difficult. You know, when we tried to split up into two four hour days, now what it is, is it's one four hour day, you can do it virtually. And then there's two hours of homework that everyone has to do ahead of time. So I think it's just much more manageable for people to be able to commit to four hours as opposed to eight. And then the other two hours they can do kind of on their own time. So that first class went really, really well. We did it for a specific agency. Um, and then we're hoping to release a couple classes to the public over the next couple of months. So I think that in these times, especially, it's really important for people to be able to recognize signs of uh, mental health difficulties. And I think now I, we've talked about this before, but when, when kids aren't in school as much, you know, teachers are the first ones that really recognize or people that have a lot of contact with the students that can recognize signs of potential mental health difficulties. And when they're on Zoom, um, and they're not as engaged as much and the ones that are more depressed are staying home more and not going to school. And so I think that um, as much as we can recognize and reach out to the kids that we might be concerned about, I think the better. So we're hoping to get that out back out to the community. Hi, sorry. Uh, um, the, um, no, that's okay. The inter my internet's all messed up, so I'm on my phone. Oh, that's okay. I know mine, I'll be like in the middle of a really important meeting and it'll kick me off. So hopefully that doesn't happen today, but I get it. <laughs> and then the other, the other things are, we're still working really collaboratively. I mean, I think that that's one of, you know, you always have to look for the silver liner lining, but one of the things that this uh, pandemic has really caused us to do is work collaboratively with so many other divisions uh, within the town, outside the town, within Needham. So it's really been great to partner with so many organizations. So all of those uh, meetings continue. Um, the Alliance for Safety and Wellness, we've, you know, we talked about this last time, but we had a bigger collaborative meeting with um, a bunch of people in the community and we're meeting again to roll out some of those initiatives. So I think that that will be in the works um, in the next couple of months as well. So, you know, CCIT, YRN, the Vaping Task Force, DVAC, that's all um, continued pretty strongly. Um, and that's pretty much the updates of the programs that we're doing right now. Any questions? Good work. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's busy, but it's good. Um, just on kind of, I remember you were talking about the, uh, the teachers kind of realizing like students are having mental health issues, like when they do see that, like what, what, what are their options like as of right now? And then what are we providing them in the future or what are we working towards at least? In terms of youth mental health first aid or just in general? Yeah. Uh, yeah just youth mental yeah. health first aid. So youth mental health first aid, really what it does is it, um, teaches the participants how to interact with somebody that might be having mental health difficulties. How do you engage in the conversation with them? How do you help them get help if that's what they need? Um, how do you, you know, if, if somebody is, you know, mildly anxious or mildly 
depressed and you feel like you can kind of talk to them and help connect them with somebody that might be able to help, then that's great. If it's something where it's severe mental health issues and you need to take additional steps to call in a therapist, call in a school administrator or something like that, it teaches you how to go through all of those steps. Um, you know, the, the basis for the, the training also is to be able to recognize the difference between typical adolescent development that can look, I mean, kids go through difficult periods. And so being able to recognize normal adolescent development compared to somebody that's having actual mental health difficulties gotcha. and what steps to take. So, um, and it also teaches you, you know, the one thing that's most helpful to any youth that's going through something is to have one caring adult. So it really mm -hmm. builds resilience. And so how do, you know, if all, uh, most of the people that are in the training have some contact with youth, but how can you potentially be that one person to help them through whatever difficult period they're having? And it cool. clearly says, you know, we're not teaching you how to be a therapist by any means, but like, how do you interact and how do you help, um, help guide someone through those difficulties? So, and they're okay. actually, they're in the process of um, being able to teach like a peer to peer model for college students. So like if you're a student and your peer is having difficulties, like how can you intervene? So I think that'll be really beneficial once that comes out. So that's, that's open to teachers primarily, but then also it's open to students and anybody else who wants to like really learn that kind of stuff too. That new class. Yeah. They, oh, I don't, they're, cool. they're not teaching it quite yet, they're, mm -hmm. but um, it's in the works. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, Sarah, um, community focus. Yeah. Um, staff and board discussion of what's happening in our community as it relates to youth and families. Yeah. So we talked about that a little bit at the beginning. And, um, you know, I think the racial inequities too is a huge focus of ours. We talked about this a little bit last meeting and all of the things that we're doing to try to ensure that we're really emphasizing equality and looking back at our policies and our programs and making sure that, that all of that is um, equitable. Um, so those are the two big focuses we're having right now, but I just wanted to see if there's other things happening in the community that we should be aware of and focused on. Just the pandemic. Just the, yeah, I know. It's like the focus of everyone's attention right now. I think with the vaccine rollout too, you know, we're, I'm trying to help people. I think people have this thought that, you know, once they get the vaccine, everything's going to go back to normal. And, you know, we're trying to help prepare people for that. You know, it's not going to be that easy. <laughs> and, you know, what, you know, some people aren't going to get the vaccine. Some people don't believe in it. Some people can't do it for other reasons and by the you know kids can't get it yet so I, I just think that it's going to be a long road and I also think that um, there's mental health that is due to the pandemic you know some depression that's kicked in and I, I think that there is a light at the end of the tunnel but then that depression can still linger so making sure people don't think because I think that that's going to be a shock if they feel like oh my depression will just go away once I get the vaccine and things open back up um, but the world is just going to look different, you know, the amount of unemployment and loss. And so I, I, I'm hoping that we can help bring people hope, but be realistic in that hope so that they're not disappointed in three months when, when it is a slow transition back. Um, so I, you know, I'm hoping that we can support people through that. And it's, it's, it's going to be difficult, but I think, you know, I was watching the vaccines roll out on the trucks and it like brought, I got a little choked up, you know, just, it, it is, it is really hopeful. Um, it, I mean, the pandemic is, is definitely, I mean, it's almost been a year at this point. I was talking to Carolyn in supervision and we were like, yeah, it's, you know, two months from being a year. And like, how naive were we that we were like going home with our laptops, like, oh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks, bye. And, and how, you know, just all of that changed. So it's a hard balance. Like you want people to have some hope because people are so fatigued by this whole thing. Right. And yet, you know, you don't want them to right, think everything's just going to turn on a dime. Right. Right. So, yeah. Like it yeah. did in March yeah. turned on a dime, but it's not <laughs> yes. going to turn that fast this time. Right. Right. Yeah. It turned quickly. Yep. Mm. I think it's also scary hearing what's going on in the UK 
you yeah. know, and the new, the new strain and how fast and how many people are getting sick so quickly. And yep. so it's, you know, the vaccine and. Right. You know. Right. Yep. Yeah, no, the balance, it's, it's really tough. All right. Well, I mean, again, you know, please, you know, I'm glad that we have these meetings every month so we can check in. But if, you know, anyone's ever hearing anything in between meetings, please let me know. And, you know, just so that I, we know to address it. Um, the other thing, a little bit off topic, but the um, Commission of Park and Rec reached out to me and they wanted to know if someone from our board wanted to attend one of their meetings just to talk about how the boards are doing and then also... Um, also, any way the park and rec can help support other um, divisions over the next couple of months. And Karen, they had your name. I don't know if you had done it in the past. No, I haven't. But I was going to say, I'm technically the nom their nominee to this board. So oh. I'm happy to be that. Oh, I'm happy it. to okay. do that and, and be the connection between the two. Okay, great. So, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, and let, let me know what comes up with that meeting. We, I mean, again, sure, we've, yeah. we've worked really closely with Park and Rec on a couple programs, yeah, but um, yeah. if any like innovative ideas come out of that, I'd be happy yeah, to be part of it. Okay, cool. Thank right. you. Yep. Great. Is there any um, new or old business? Um, the only thing is um, Adrian had to hop off, but she, they haven't found a replacement SRO quite yet. So, you know, she'll continue to come to these meetings when she can and represent the police department until that position has been filled. So um, I'll keep you updated on that as soon as we have any more information. Those are going to be hard shoes to fill. Yeah. She's really good. Yeah. I know. Definitely. I know even when she was talking about her, um, like what she's doing at lunch with the kids. And I mean, the kids just love her. So it, it will be. Difficult. We have, uh, I mean, Vinny was awesome at a high school, but the new high school SRO is uh, RJ and I just find him to be incredible in terms of the connections and he's he's always seen in the hallways and walking around and talking to kids and teachers and I feel like oh, we're great. really lucky to have him. That's great. That's great. I wasn't sure if it was RJ or Rocket because they right. go hand in hand, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's why people are so excited to see RJ. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy how big Rocket's gotten because I think it, it, they got him like r right before all this happened, right? He was like this tiny little like, but it was really cute. But yeah, no, that's great. I mean, I think anyone that responds well to police in the schools, I, you know, you know, they're doing a good job in making those connections. So that's great that he's chit chatting with people all the time. Excellent. All right. Anything else, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all I had. Oh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Thank you, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we will adjourn by unanimous consent. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. All right.